In this first episode, we will introduce you to the basics of hydro power, the different types of hydro and how they work. There are three main types of hydroelectric generation, storage, pump storage and run of river. At SSE Renewables, we have power stations which generate power using all three of these, though the vast majority of our power stations are storage. We start, therefore, with storage hydroelectric, sometimes known as impounded power. With this type of hydro, a natural lock or man-made reservoir formed by damming a river collects water draining from the surrounding area, which can be hundreds or even thousands of square kilometres in size. What is created is a store of water situated at a higher altitude than the power station it supplies. The difference in height between the power station and the reservoir is called the head. The higher the head, the more energy there is in the water to drive the turbines and the more electricity it can produce. This is the same principle as the header tanks in the lofts of houses that provide the water pressure for the hot water taps. This type of scheme gives the operator of the power station a significant amount of flexibility over when and how much electricity is generated in response to customers' needs. Even so, the amount of water the operator is allowed to extract from the reservoir is controlled, in order to prevent the water level falling so low that environment and wildlife are adversely affected. We turn now to pumped storage. In some ways, this can be compared to a garden water feature that recirculates the same water but on a much larger scale. Pumped storage schemes have two reservoirs to hold the water, with one higher than the other. Traditionally, pump storage has been used when there is a high demand for electricity. However, as we move to an electricity system with a high proportion of intermittent renewable energy, such as onshore and offshore wind power, Pump storage will have an important role to play in storing the electricity from wind power when it is generating more electricity than is needed and then using this electricity to meet demand when it can't be supplied by wind power. Pump storage works when water is released from the higher reservoir to drive the turbines in the power station below it before being passed into the lower reservoir. Then, at times when there is cheap surplus electricity available, for example from wind farms or solar, the electricity generators are switched to become massive motors, which pump water from the lower reservoir back up to the higher one, where it is stored until it is needed to meet the next peak in demand. Pump storage schemes give the operator even greater control over when the power station runs and can often respond very quickly to meet unexpected high demand for electricity. Typically, pump storage schemes can be operating in full output in under two minutes when called on to do so. Foyers, owned by SSE, on the south shore of Loch Ness, is one of only four pumped storage schemes in the UK. In future episodes, we will look in more detail at the vital role storage and pump storage have to play in the future as we move towards an electricity system with a high proportion of renewable energy, which will be required to meet our climate change targets. The last type of hydropower we will look at is run of river. In the simplest run of river schemes, some of the water from a naturally fast flowing river is diverted via a tunnel to drive a water turbine in a nearby power station. The turbine spins as the water flows, driving a shaft that is connected to the electricity generator. The water is then allowed to flow back in the river. The main disadvantage of run of river schemes is that the amount of electricity and when it can be generated is almost entirely governed by how much water there is in the river at any given time. When permission is granted to build run of river schemes, there is usually a requirement that a set minimum amount of water must always be allowed to remain in the river to protect wildlife and habitat. So when the river is low due to lack of rain, the power station may be starved of water and unable to generate any electricity at all. Admittedly, this doesn't happen very often in Scotland, but it does sometimes. Most run of river schemes are small in scale and operated on private estates or are community owned schemes. Regardless of the type of hydropower in question, very few of SSE's hydropower stations operate in isolation. They are part of a series of what are described as cascades. Within each cascade, a high storage reservoir provides the storage and then the water is managed down the cascade system through a series of power stations, locks and reservoirs this allows us to maximise generation and control when that generation capacity is needed. 
For example, in our tunnel scheme, we have a cascade which includes nine power stations, four major dams, 10 locks and reservoirs. This ability to manage the storage of our main fuel source, water, and control its availability is increasingly central to hydropower's importance in our electricity system. In effect, our hydro assets act like a battery, storing energy for when it's needed. And when you take all of our hydro assets together, we believe they act as Britain's biggest battery. In our next episode, we'll take you inside some of SSE's hydro power stations, showing you that our power stations come in all sorts of shapes and sizes and have been designed to fit with the natural environment within which they sit. To watch all the videos in this series, head to sserenewables.com forward slash hydro.